Hello guys, welcome back again to Bartronix TV. As you know, we have done a couple of videos about RL and RC circuits. Now, let's take a look of having a resistor, capacitor, and inductor at the same time. Our topic for this video is about the RLC second order linear differential equations and its output response. And for our first discussion, we will have the series RLC. Obtain an equation to solve this kind of circuits and see the differences of its response based on the conditions. For the actual applications, the solution will be a combination of natural response and forced response. Natural response for which our circuit is disconnected from the input and the stored energy in our capacitor and inductor will decay to zero naturally with our dissipative resistor element. It is also called a homogeneous differential equation because the equation will eventually decay and end up to zero. Force response is when the RLC reacts with some stimulus or independent input. It is a non-homogeneous DE because now there is a stimulus and you will see that the right side of our equation is not zero. For a non-homogeneous DE, the solution will be composed of the complementary and the particular solutions. So again, before we go on, on obtaining a mathematical equations, for the RLC second order linear differential equations, first, the total solution will be a combination of natural and force response. We will have a homogeneous differential equation for solving natural response and it requires initial value conditions y of 0 and y prime of 0. We will have a non-homogeneous differential equation for solving force response and for a non-homogeneous solution, it is a combination of complementary solution and this complementary solution will also require an initial value condition of y0 and y prime of 0 and a particular solution. Let's start with our natural response of our series RLC. In this time, our input is disconnected. We will use the KVL to obtain an equation so that we will have the summation of the inductor voltage, the resistor voltage, and the capacitor voltage equal to zero. We will replace all those voltage across elements in terms of current. For the inductor, it is L by di dt. For the resistor, it is the current multiplied with the resistance. And for the capacitor, it is 1 over C integral of I dt plus the initial capacitor voltage at time equal to 0. And the whole equations will be equated to 0. To get rid of the integral operator, we will have to differentiate both sides of the equations. This will reduce our equation into L by the second derivative of current with respect to time, d squared i over dt squared, plus r multiplied with di dt, first de derivative of the current, plus 1 over c times the derivative of the integral that will just cancel each other, and that will leave us 1 over c times i, plus a derivative of a constant b of c, at time equal to 0, it is 0, and equal to the derivative of 0, which is also 0. To further simplify and get rid of the coefficient of the second order derivative, we will have to divide by L both sides of the equations. This will make our equations into this form. We can also represent our derivative terms in terms of prime notation. It will make the second order derivative of the current into I double prime of T multiplied with R over L times the first derivative of the current I prime of T plus 1 over LC times I of T equal to 0. So guys, we have now derived the second order linear differential equations of a series RLC circuit under the natural response, which is a homogeneous equation. Now guys, the next question is, what will be the form of solution for this second order differential equation? It is good to know that in the differential equations, there are known set of solutions. 
and I will not make it hard for you guys. I will give it to you right away. So the possible solution for this one, which is our I of t, is in the form of a e to the s t. So what about the I prime of t? It's just getting the derivative of the a e to the s t, which is equivalent to a times s e to the s t. And also the second derivative of i of t is just a times s squared times e to the s t. So guys, the next step is to substitute it back to our original equation. And doing that, our i double prime will be equivalent to a s squared e to the s t plus r over l uh, multiplied with i prime of t which is a s e to the s t plus 1 all over l c times i of t which is a e to the s t equal to 0. You will observe that there is a common term a e to the s t on the left side of our equation that we can take out. And furthermore, it can be absorbed in the right side of the equation which will be equal to 0. So now we are left by the equation s squared plus r by l times s plus 1 all over lc equal to 0. And I'm happy with it guys because from the differential equation that seems to be very hard, we are just left by this equation which is very known to us. And it is a quadratic equation, right guys? And actually guys, this is the characteristic equation of our series RLC circuits. We will just use the known formula for solving the roots of the quadratic equations and voila, there is a solution for us. So let us just recall the equation for the roots of the quadratic equation, which is equivalent to minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So that b, c, and a are the coefficients of our left side terms. In this case, our a is equal to 1, our b is equal to r by l, and our c is equivalent to 1 over lc. So substituting all those coefficients in our quadratic equations formula, we will have minus r by 2l plus minus the square root of the quantity squared r by 2l minus 1 over lc. In many of the textbooks, r by 2l is defined as the alpha or the damping coefficients. And then omega sub o is equivalent to 1 by square root of lc is called the natural frequency. And then the normalized damping factor which is zeta is equivalent to alpha divided by omega sub o. And for the manipulation of that, we will end up with zeta equivalent to r by 2 multiplied with square root of c over l. So guys, please take note those three important terms because dealing with RLC circuits, those terms will give you insights on how your circuits will respond. Like your circuit will tend to oscillate, will have slow response or fast response. So guys, I will just show you again the original equations that we have derived. But in this time, I will rewrite our equation in terms of alpha, omega sub o, and zeta. Because in some of the textbook, the RLC second order linear differential equation is written in this way using the alpha, omega sub o, and the zeta. So looking at it, r by l can be replaced by 2 alpha and our 1 all over lc is equivalent to omega sub o squared. In some of the textbook, it is written in terms of zeta and omega sub o and with that, we will just replace our alpha in terms of zeta times omega sub o. And guys, going back to our quadratic characteristics equation, we all know that we will derive two roots in here and that will depend on the value of our alpha and omega sub o. We will represent this in terms of three conditions like we say we have case one when alpha is greater than omega sub o. 
our roots will be S1 and S2 are distinct and real. Case 2, which is alpha is less than omega sub O. Our S1 and S2 roots are complex and conjugate. And for case 3, for which our alpha is equal to omega sub O, our S1 and S2 roots are the same and real. So guys, to have a summary of what we have discussed and to have a consolidated view of it, I made a table that will show you the conditions for solution, types of solution, forms of solution to be used, the value of the damping factor, and the output response. And guys, I want to remind you that with second order linear differential equation, the solution must be linearly independent. This is very important guys. It must be linearly independent. Showing you the table that I have made for solving the second order linear differential equations. And let's start with the conditions for solution. Let's say case 1 where alpha is greater than omega sub O. The type of solution that you will use is that you will have two roots that are distinct and real. And then the form of solution will be I of t equal to A sub 1 e to the S 1 t plus A sub 2 e to the S 2 t. Now that S sub 1 and S sub 2 are the two roots that we will derive. And then A1 and A2 are constant that we will derive by having the initial value conditions. So the fourth column is the damping factor value which is the ratio of the alpha by omega sub O and we call it zeta. In case number 1 where alpha is greater than omega sub O, the value of zeta or the damping factor is greater than 1. And the output response is said to be overdamped. Now for case 2, for which our alpha is less than omega sub O, our roots will be complex and conjugate. And our form of solution will be I of t is equal to e raised to the alpha t times a sub 1 cosine omega sub dt plus a sub 2 sine of omega sub dt. Please make note that our omega sub d is the square root of alpha squared minus omega squared. And with omega greater than the alpha, it will lead to the square root of a negative number, which will lead us to a complex root having imaginary terms. And then our damping factor in here will be less than 1, and the output response is said to be underdamped. Case number 3 is where our alpha is equal to omega sub O. In this case, the types of solution that we will derive is that we will have a roots that are same and real. And our forms of solution for this one is I of t equal to a sub 1 times e to the st plus a sub 2 times s e to the st. So guys, this case 3 is a little bit tricky because we have same roots and both are real. In order for us to have a linearly independent solution, please take note that the second term, a sub 2 times s e to the st, has an added s in it to make it linearly independent on the first term solution. In here, the damping factor is equal to 1, and the output response is said to be critically damped. So guys, these are the things that you need to know or to have for at least to solve the RLC second order linear differential equations natural response. I will discuss on the second video and part 2 of this one the force response of the RLC series circuit. And guys, I want to end this video by showing you how the overdamp, underdamp, critically damp response or output response looks like. And also have some discussion on when this output responses of the system is desirable in our design. 
So guys, thank you again for watching and I hope that you have learned something in this video. And I hope that you will continue to support my channel, Birdtronics TV. Okay guys, that's all for this video and thank you for your support to Birdtronics TV.